should now have added lots of hit points like these ones I've added to the file so that you know exactly where the action happens. Well, how can we now use these hit points? Let's have a look. I'm going to find a sound that would suit that moment when the acorn pops out. And to do that, I've gone to findsounds.com, which is a website that has, funnily enough, lots of sounds on it. So down the bottom here, I think there's a good explosion sound. Well, that sounds pretty good, so I'll just go back and I'll download that sound so I can use it in my GarageBand file. So there's going to be an explosion at the moment that the acorn is pulled out of the ice. So I right click on that and I choose download linked file as. Might be a similar message of using a different browser to me. So I've just put that on my desktop. Once that's downloaded I will hide these programs and just change the window in GarageBand so that I can see that audio file on my desktop. There we go. And there it is, I've just downloaded that. So I'm going to drag that in and put it approximately where I know the hit point is. Remember, if you double click on the still frame for the hit point, it will move the playback um, line exactly to the hit point. So you can see uh, the red line now across all tracks. So to line up that um, audio file, that sound of that explosion, I just have to move it left and right. If I double click on it, that also gives me a, a zoomed in closer view so I can check that it's exactly in line with the red line. Now if I play that back I'm going to have added a bigger explosion sound to that exact hit point or marker in the garage band. So there we go, we've worked out how to make put sound effects in line with our markers or hit points or cues and in the next video we're going to learn how to put MIDI in line with those cues too.